right, ladies and gentlemen, we are starting on the Ingway Engine Pro. We are taking this bad boy to work. This is the newest 52 volt version. Something that I noticed from my last video is when I went into the P settings. One of the settings, I think it was P3, was on 48 volt. Now that doesn't change any type of power related issue with the bike. But when I finished my review video, we had five battery bars when we got done with 10 miles. And that's exactly what I started with today, by the way. I started with 10.1 miles. Right now I'm at 10.8. But anyways, our battery bars never went down because I think the bike thought it was on 48 volts. So when the company shipped it to me, that should have been changed to 52 volt. That's not something I should have had to do. So I think someone messed up when they sent me the bike. But anyways, I changed it to 52 volt. We're gonna do nine miles today, back and forth to work. It's gonna be daytime going to work and then when I come back, it's gonna be nighttime. So we're gonna be able to check out all these lights. I do have an aftermarket light up here as well, just to make sure uh, we can see the difference between the one they put on the bike and something that you can pick up from a company and you know give a little bit better scene ability when riding these bikes to be a little bit more safer. What up? I like your bike. I like Thanks. He liked my bike, is what he said. <laughs> Those are some young kids about to get into some electric e-bikes probably in the future to get around. This is what's so cool about it. If you were into riding bikes like that back in the day when you were younger, you're absolutely going to love electric bikes. There's so many things you could do, so many places you could explore. You can live in the same city forever and still find new stuff if you just get on a bike and go ride around. You'll like come into some stuff that you never even knew was around your area. It's super cool. Now I do need to mention this on this video because I get a lot of comments. This is not a review video of this bike. This is just kind of seeing how it is to take it back and forth to work. I've already done a full video review on it. And you guys, if you haven't seen that, one of my biggest complaints about this bike is that you can go up to 20 miles an hour throttle only. That's not a big deal. You pedal to get to 28 miles an hour. I don't like that you can't use throttle and pedals because sometimes it just feels comfortable just to use your thumb and just keep it there and then when you switch over to the pedals it just works instead of having to let off the throttle go back to the pedals but the biggest complaint was that this bike will go 28 miles an hour but when you hit 28 miles an hour it has a hard cut cuts all your power for like two seconds you lose two to three miles per hour and you can still be pedaling your ass off and it just it loses all your momentum that was one thing I really hated about this bike, and I don't know why Ingway did it the way they did. I would probably suggest, if you're not someone that likes to pedal or get a workout, get the version 1.0 instead of the 2.0, because I haven't even made it maybe two miles in the work, and I'm already tired. And I also feel like I just can't go that fast because I wanna hold 28 miles per hour all day long, which is legal around here. So like what I'd like to do to get up to speed, I hit 20 miles an hour, and then I switch over to the pedals. The reason why it's better to start with the throttle on this bike and then go to the pedals is because every time you come to a red light and start, you need to be in gear number one because the bike's not really gonna move in gear number eight. So it's really just, I'm not trying to go through these gears every you know couple hundred feet and start all over again. I'm not doing that. So I use a throttle and then we use the pedals. Well, that's a nice clean color on that. It's like a emerald green. Let's see how it does coming up this hill. Dang, all right. It's a red light for you, buddy. So we're about to hit 20 miles an hour right now. Let me go over to the pedals. There is a little bit delay. If you're on flat road, you won't notice it, but coming uphill there was. But not too bad, 21 miles per hour. Now we're almost getting to the top, so we're doing about 22, 23. But yeah, not too bad of a bike. That's something I noticed on it. Even though I hate the top speed of this bike and how it cuts your momentum and hitting 28 and just staying there solid, this really has some good torque. It's only 75 Newton meters, but the bike is so light that it was climbing hills that no other bike on this channel would do that has about 95 newton meters of torque. So really good torquey e-bike. It's just they need to fix that top speed issue. And coming down the hill, we hit 30 miles an hour. Not too bad, but ghost pedaling, definitely ghost pedaling. I feel like this bike is comfortable to pedal at about 22 to 24 miles per hour. After that, to get any more speed out of it, you're moving your feet so much that you're kind of forcing the cranks to rotate and it feels like my feet are going to fly off these pedals. I mentioned that when you go off-road and you're going to hit a bunch of potholes and everything like that. 
that's something I didn't like because these pedals are just not grippy at all. And they make sense because they fold in half and this is a folding e-bike, but it needs to have a bigger chain ring, some type of bigger gears to feel more connected to the bike when trying to hit 20 miles an hour. Another thing to mention on this bike is that the seat is very comfortable if you just sit on it flat, but once you do start pedaling, your butt is going to go back and forth, back and forth, and I've noticed that it hasn't been that comfortable when I aggressively pedal. But if I lightly pedal, it's not that bad, but my body is literally shifting back and forth on the seat, and it doesn't feel very good when I'm trying to hit 28 miles an hour the whole entire time. And I just feel like I look dumb out here trying to pedal super, super fast. It just doesn't feel natural. Oh, and another thing that happened on my video review Remember I told you when I was hitting off-road and I heard some click clacking around, I thought it was maybe the front fender. It's actually the keys underneath the frame. The keys always have to be in the bike to turn the battery on and they cannot pull out when you're riding. But I have both keys attached right now and the second key is just flapping around and heating the frame underneath. Let me show you guys this thing I was talking about where it hits 28 miles an hour and I'm not going to change how I pedal. So can you hear the motor at all? I know there's cars passing me, but check this out. See, look, go down to 26. All of a sudden, hit 28, hard cut. I'm still pedaling, pedaling as hard as I can. Now it comes back, hit 28, cuts off power again. I'm still pedaling. Watch it, it's gonna come back up. 28 hard cut. That is not fun. That's not fun at all, Ingwe. I don't know who came up with that idea or what. I don't like it. Here we go. This is gonna be sketchy. I got a lot of cars behind me. People are gonna have to share the road. Hopefully no one opens their uh, their door. Holy crap. This is a big ass van. They had a person in there. I don't know what's going on. All right, at least people are getting over and uh, not trying to hit me. I appreciate it. It's always the sketchiest part going to work. I'm pretty sure you guys have a lot of issues like this as well in your area i only had to go four and a half miles so we're literally only doing nine miles today but this side is always really bad coming back home isn't bad because i'll be riding at like almost one in the morning so there's not much traffic out and it's a little bit more safer even though i did tell you guys these lights aren't that great especially the brake light too i think i trust the brake light more than the headlight being able to see what's in front of me but only time will tell when we get there and i'm a really out of shape i could tell so this is really a good bike if you want to get a workout in instead of just relying on the bike to give you the power because whoo yeah i'm uh i'm dying all right we're gonna cut through here I'm trying to get splashed with water that wouldn't be fun not trying to get all nasty and whatnot like when coming to work go truck go it's your turn it's your turn you don't have a stop sign go buddy okay your ranger's not that big i'm in that time right now where i feel really hot because i'm wearing a sweater to work and it's the same sweater i'm gonna ride when i go home because it's gonna obviously be a lot colder when i go home but right now i'm on fire there we go remember i was telling you about changing the voltage on the p setting three look we've already went down one battery bar for four and a half miles so there you go, exactly what I was saying. It wasn't set up correctly when they sent me the bike. And this is the setting I'm talking about. So P3, 52 volts. That's where it was supposed to be. Mine was at 48. But anyways, I gotta get this helmet off. I am like dying. I'm gonna go stand in the cooler really quick. There's one good thing about having these keys is that you can take them out and you don't have to worry about someone taking your bike because then it won't turn on anymore once you take them out. All right, time to take the Ingwe bike in the store real quick because I think everyone's in the back doing the load. So let's make it back there. But I realized, I forgot, had the keys in my pocket. There we go. I'm not sure exactly which way it goes. Oh, I got it right, cool. All right, while we ride around the store, try not to get hurt. Should have slowed down a little bit for that. First time I've came out the back way of this store. Normally there's a bunch of uh, 
homeless people back here because they make uh, campsites out here. Battery bars look like they went up to five. I noticed when I turned the bike on and off when I was at work, when I was uh, about to lock it up, it went back up. But I'm pretty sure, give us like a mile, and it's gonna go right back down. I thought I was gonna get ran over. All right, one button to hit the headlight on, and the headlight is on, and okay. That's what we get for the headlight. Let's check it out when we start riding. Let's get out of here. Do not want to be working anymore. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of lights back here, so it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks decent, I guess. Not something I truly think is great, but it is working. One thing I do like about the light is that when you do turn it on, the display gets darker. Such a nice small little touch right there. Let's go out. Let's go out this way. Dang. It's a bunch of gravel right there. What the heck? Oh, oh, big bump. Bike's pretty smooth though, I gotta say. I told you off-roading in my video review, it was like, I'm gonna go. It was like a 7.5 out of 10 for going off road. It's a really comfortable bike. The seat, like I said earlier, when you're pedaling, you just feel your butt going back and forth. And that's really gonna depend on your weight, your body build, how your butt's formed, you know? I don't know, but all I'm saying is a little uncomfortable for me when I start pedaling. But anyways, this is how we're looking out here with that front light. It looks like a bunch of little scattered light and my GoPro always picks this up slightly differently. So in person, it's really hard to say because I see it on the GoPro side when I'm on the computer. I'm like, oh, that looks way different. But uh, it's not super wide. I can see in this lane, which is nice. I can see a little bit up here going almost to the sidewalk, but it doesn't fully go that far. But it's just not super bright. It, you could deal with it. It's not like you're not gonna be happy about it. But if you ride at night, guys, all the time, you want to upgrade this light because right now, let's okay, you guys see this light right here? I'm going to turn on my electric XP light. It's a beacon headlight and boom, <laughs> so much better. Now, let me see if I have it in the highest mode. I think I do, but I just wanted to you know, double check. Okay, that's the highest mode. It took me a little bit to figure it out. But there we go, guys. You see how crazy this light is compared to the stock light. Now, I will briefly turn off the stock light. Um, hopefully, no one's behind me because I do not want to get ran over. All right, we're good. We're good. All right, hold on. Let me do this. Okay. The stock headlight is off completely. I'm running off the aftermarket one. And to prove it, let's go back and show you what this one looks like. I love how it activates so quick, but I don't like the quality of it. I can barely see. With this one, I can definitely see so much better. Now you're still going to need to keep the stock lighting system on the bike. So the stock headlight in the front always has to be on at night because you need that rear brake light to be activated. It's only gonna activate when you hit the brakes, but it's not gonna be lit up when you're just actually rolling and not braking. So you need people to see you. So you're gonna be using an aftermarket one if you buy one and the stock light as well. I'm obviously not going to kill myself going home today because I tried, guys. I tried to go super fast going to work. I was always trying to stay at 26 to 28 miles an hour, but I just couldn't do it. Um, the way the pedaling system is on here, I feel like this is comfortable to pedal right here, and this is the most power I can get out of it, comfortably. Um, if I wanna pedal faster, I can, but you lose all your momentum when you hit that 28 miles an hour, like I said. And I want to really get down and give you guys my personal opinion on this bike. I feel like Ingwe is like a mid-tier company. They're not the top of the top, but they're not on the bottom of the bottom. They're kind of in the middle. They have some really good e-bikes. They do really good things. They're always coming out with something cool. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. But I like the fact that they're always kind of doing something. And for the most part, like the EP2, then they had the EP2 Pro, then they had the Engine Pro, then the Engine Pro 2 now, the one I'm riding. So they're always doing some cool stuff. I really highly suggest, if you guys do like Ingwe and you're not a big pedal person, get the 1.0. You'll be perfectly happy with it. You move the pedals, get max speed. I don't remember on the Engine Pro having that issue of 28 miles an hour cutting and then dropping your power. I don't think you're gonna experience that on the 1.0. 
if you are someone that needs more power, you gotta get up hills, do all that fun stuff, what the heck is in the road? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I had my aftermarket light on. I don't think I would have seen that with a stock one. I feel like you guys would be perfectly happy with this thing if you got a lot of hills or you want to pedal, you want to get a workout in. It's very comfortable. Going up hills, it's a beast. I showed it in my video review. It's absolutely insane how crazy this thing will like come up hills even for 75 newton meter torque. I think I've said it many times in my review. I said it many times in this video and it's a great bike. But if you think, okay, I want to hit 28 miles an hour all day long, then this isn't the bike for you. It's going to be really difficult to stay at that 28 miles an hour. You're really going to be burning some calories. You're going to be getting a workout in. If you don't need a workout in, which you can probably tell I'm huffing and puffing already. <laughs> I'm probably only like three miles from my house, or I, I want to say three miles in going to my house. Then this is probably not going to be the bike for you. Let me see if I can make that. Oh yeah, we got 10 seconds, nine, eight seven we're doing 30 miles coming downhill very nice very nice there's no point in pedaling though because it was not going to give me any more power I'm trying to get back into the pedals though it just felt lost i felt like where are my feet going i just felt like they were rotating like hella fast to try to match up to the speed but i feel like if ingway just didn't do that issue i told you about this would be a phenomenal bike especially for the price Right now it's $12.99, it's $100 off, and it's cool. I really like Ingwe as a company. Now I'm not gonna say all the products are perfect, especially like you guys are probably gonna have a motor issue or a controller issue or something. Every single bike manufacturer out there goes through these issues because they don't make these parts. The controller they don't make, they don't make the motors. So you're bound to get a dud every so often. Like when they sent me the EP2, this is probably my first year into doing YouTube and I started getting products sent to me, I bashed them really hard because I was eight miles away or six miles away from my house out in the country before the new development happened way out there and it died. It completely died. Now, I was a little harsh because I didn't decide to take off the panels of the thing and see if something on the controller came loose. Cause you gotta understand these things come shipped out. FedEx, UPS could be messing up your packages. You never know. So I kind of feel bad for not looking into it but I bashed it because I literally got it to turn on, move like a mile, if that, and it turned off again, and I had to walk it home. That was not fun. So I was really hard on them. Then they sent me the Engine Pro, the one before this model. Absolutely loved it. This one, I feel like it kind of took a step forward, but then it also took a step back. And I don't want you guys to be swayed by what I actually say about this. I mean, if you guys are really interested in this and the pros and cons that I said about it, then you guys already know if it's gonna be for you or not. But like I said, 28 miles an hour solid is legal here, class three. And this is a street legal bike, 100%. It's a 750 watt motor. Doesn't matter if it has a slightly higher peak. It says 750 watts on the back. You are not getting in trouble with this thing. And it does limit you at 27 to 28 miles an hour, but I can't hold that speed. I can't. Uh, uh, uh. Go, 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 go. Go. That's why you have dents on the side of your car. Why are you doing like 20 miles an hour? What the heck, man? You see that? <laughs> People are crazy. All right, I'm gonna go across this way. That is nuts. I'm turning around because I'm waiting for traffic to go and make sure there's no car. And this guy just starts doing like 15, 20 miles an hour in a 45. Like, what are you doing, bro? I think it's like a 40 then goes to 45 after the light, but man, people suck. <laughs> I see some comments, man. Why are you riding on the other side of the road? Well, sometimes if you got to get from point A to point B, there might be a brief second I got to ride on the other side of the road. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me for doing that. There's people out here. You probably seen them in my videos. If you guys have watched me from like a long time ago, when I do my vlogs, you'll see some person on the bike on this side coming my way with no lights on whatsoever. And there's not even any street lights. That's dangerous. I don't do that. I know what side to ride on. It's just sometimes you got to ride on the other side just to get on that street real quick. I'm not trying to go all the way farther to hit a light, then go across, wait for that, then backtrack the other way. No, I'd rather just cut across the street real quick, which I'm going to do right here. Woo! We're going to cut in between the school. All right, let's go. Let's go. Woo! Oh, man, they just watered that. Oh, I think I got splashed. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. That was very comfortable jumping off the curb. Kitty, kitty. Ew. 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 
I just want to pet you. That's all I want to do. I promise. Get a. Get a. Can never get no cats riding bikes, man. I thought electric vehicles were going to be super quiet. <laughs> but that little motor noise in the tires, man, scares them away. On that note, guys, I'm going to leave you at that. Pick and choose if you want to buy this one or not. I think personally, I would just kind of move past it. They have another bike and I'll put it up on the screen because I don't remember what kind it was, but it was a nice bike. It was 52 volt as well. I'm, I'm really glad that Ingway's going to 52 volt. Don't get me wrong. They're 48 volt bikes. They're just kind of outdated now. I feel like everyone's just giving more voltage, more power because my area is cool, but your area might have a bunch of hills and stuff you got to climb. And that's why we need this extra power. And if you want to haul stuff on this thing, because I think this rack uh, holds 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. So if you want to use that, you can, and that's going to definitely slow you down, especially if you're a bigger person. I'm 170 pounds and I want to show you guys. Oh man. <laughs> okay. I told you the grass was wet over there by the school. And that's the second time my feet slipped off the pedal. That one was really bad. It almost hit the ground. I thought I was going to uh, break my ankle right there. Not a huge fan of these pedals. Don't like them at all. But real quick, I think people are sleeping. So yeah, we're going to go down the street just a little bit. I'm going to tell you <laughs> where we're at right now. But realistically, let's just get into it because there's no voltage reading on here. There's no battery percentage. And it's showing. I started at 10.1 or 10.3 miles on this. I think it's 10.1. Right now it says I have 19.1. That's exactly nine miles which is 100% accurate because it's four and a half miles there, four and a half miles back. I've only went down one battery bar, especially since I fixed the voltage thing on here. So it's kind of crazy that it's only one battery bar for nine miles. That's pretty damn good. I don't exactly know what the specs say on their website of how much range you can get out of this thing. It's not a big battery. It's like 16 amp hours, 52 volt. It's not a 20 amp hour battery like most of these bikes, but I gotta say for the weight of this bike and everything like that it's pretty good but i'm really starting to think because i can't do 28 miles an hour i'm not getting that much power and i have to pedal as well that's where you're kind of saving a lot of battery as well so there's going to be a good bike for range and a workout if that's what you guys are looking for and on that note i'm going to leave you guys with looking at the brake light and then i'm out and this is your brake light you tell me what you think it gets brighter when you do hit the brakes but how much brighter? Not that much. You decide if you like it or not, and I'll see you guys in the next one. True MVPs. Peace out.